Chapter 1. A City on the Brink. In the heart of the Roman Empire, the bustling city of Rome stood as a testament to the greatness of its people. Its marble buildings and cobbled streets were a symbol of the strength and resilience that had brought the city to prominence. Yet, beneath this veneer of prosperity and power, Rome was a city on the brink of turmoil. The gap between the rich and the poor had grown wider, threatening to tear the fabric of Roman society apart. The wealthy patricians lived in opulence, their lavish villas towering over the squalid dwellings of the struggling plebeians. As the disparity grew, so too did the tensions between the social classes, sparking unrest and discontent among the masses. At the center of this struggle stood Gaius Valerius, an ambitious and idealistic young senator who believed in a brighter future for Rome. Witnessing the suffering of the common people, Gaius knew that something had to change. He dedicated his life to the pursuit of social and political reforms, aiming to bridge the divide between the rich and the poor, and to bring justice and fairness to the citizens of Rome. However, Gaius' pursuit of change was met with fierce opposition from the entrenched powers within the Roman Senate, particularly from the cunning and ruthless Lucius Aemilius. As a staunch defender of the status quo and the privileges of the patrician class, Lucius saw Gaius' reforms as a threat to his own power and influence. As tensions mounted, Rome became a battleground of political intrigue and maneuvering. The Senate, once a beacon of wisdom and deliberation, devolved into a crucible of ambition and scheming. Gaius and Lucius found themselves locked in a bitter struggle for the soul of Rome, each fighting for a vision of the empire's future that could not coexist with the other. Chapter 2 the birth of a vision. In the midst of Rome's brewing turmoil, Gaius Valerius found solace in the quieter corners of the city, where he could reflect on his dreams for a better future. Surrounded by the tranquil gardens and ancient temples, he contemplated the steps necessary to bridge the social divide and bring about lasting change. Gaius understood that his vision required a bold plan, one that would shake the very foundations of the Roman Senate and challenge the status quo. He spent countless hours poring over scrolls and consulting with trusted advisors, seeking wisdom in the words of philosophers and the experiences of past reformers. As he studied and strategized, Gaius began to formulate a comprehensive set of reforms that would address the most pressing issues facing Rome. His proposals included measures to redistribute wealth, extend rights to the plebeian class, and reform the legal system to ensure fair treatment for all citizens. With his plan in hand, Gaius set to work rallying support for his cause. He spoke passionately to his fellow senators, imploring them to see the necessity of change and to join him in his quest for a more equitable Rome. As his message resonated with those who shared his ideals, Gaius slowly built a coalition of like-minded senators and influential citizens, bolstering his movement for reform. Yet, as word of Gaius' intentions spread throughout Rome, it reached the ears of Lucius Aemilius. Recognizing the threat Gaius posed to his power and the established order, Lucius resolved to do whatever was necessary to undermine his rival's efforts. Chapter 3. A Clash of Ideals. The political atmosphere in Rome grew increasingly tense as Gaius Valerius' movement gained momentum. His ideas for a more equitable society resonated with many, but they also stirred deep-seated fears among the entrenched aristocracy, who saw their power and privilege at risk. In the Roman Senate, Heated debates over Gaius' proposed reforms exposed the widening rift between those who sought change and those who clung to tradition. Gaius, with his unyielding passion for justice, tirelessly argued his case, seeking to sway his fellow senators and garner the support he needed to bring his vision to life. Across the chamber, Lucius Aemilius watched Gaius' efforts with growing concern. A master strategist and skilled manipulator, he knew that he must act swiftly to counter the rising tide of support for Gaius' reforms. Lucius reached out to his network of allies, both within the Senate and among Rome's elite, formulating a plan to discredit Gaius and undermine his movement. As the battle lines were drawn, Gaius and Lucius found themselves at the center of a bitter struggle for the soul of Rome. Gaius, driven by his convictions and an unwavering belief in the potential for a better society, fought relentlessly for his reforms, while Lucius sought to maintain the status quo and protect the interests of the privileged few. With every speech, debate, and negotiation, the tension between Gaius and Lucius intensified, their rivalry reflecting the broader struggle between progress and tradition. As they clashed in the hallowed halls of the Senate, the people of Rome watched with bated breath, their futures hinging on the outcome of this epic confrontation. Chapter 4. Turning the Tide. 
As the struggle between Gaius Valerius and Lucius Emilius intensified, the people of Rome became increasingly aware of the high stakes involved in their conflict. Word of Gaius' reforms spread throughout the city, igniting a spark of hope among the common citizens who longed for a more just and equitable society. Despite the growing support for Gaius' vision, the path to reform was far from clear. In the Senate, Gaius faced fierce opposition from Lucius and his allies, who were determined to protect their power and influence at all costs. They launched a relentless campaign to discredit Gaius, spreading rumors and casting doubt on his motives. Undeterred by these tactics, Gaius continued to champion his cause, tirelessly working to build a coalition of supporters within the Senate. He reached out to influential senators, using his charisma and unwavering conviction to persuade them to join his cause. Gaius also sought to win over the hearts and minds of the Roman people, delivering impassioned speeches in the city's public spaces, detailing his vision for a brighter future. Meanwhile, Lucius Emilius doubled down on his efforts to maintain the status quo. He tightened his grip on the levers of power, ruthlessly wielding his influence to suppress dissent and shore up support among Rome's elite. His relentless determination to thwart Gaius' reforms only served to further polarize the Senate and deepen the rift within Roman society. In the midst of this escalating conflict, a turning point emerged when Gaius secured the support of a prominent senator, whose endorsement shifted the balance of power in his favor. This pivotal moment galvanized Gaius' supporters and sent shockwaves through the ranks of Lucius' allies, forcing them to re-evaluate their allegiance. Chapter 5 The Gathering Storm With the balance of power in the Senate now shifting in Gaius Valerius' favor, the pressure on Lucius Emilius to maintain his grip on the status quo intensified. As the struggle between these two powerful men continued to escalate, Rome found itself on the brink of a political storm. Determined to solidify his newfound support, Gaius wasted no time in proposing a series of sweeping reforms. These bold measures sought to address the many injustices and inequalities that had plagued Roman society for far too long. From land redistribution to debt relief, Gaius' reforms offered hope to countless citizens who had long suffered under the yoke of an oppressive system. However, the ambitious scope of Gaius' proposed changes was met with fierce resistance from Lucius and his allies. They were unwilling to relinquish their power and privilege, fearing that Gaius' reforms would undermine the very foundations of their wealth and influence. Consequently, they launched a counteroffensive, seeking to sow discord among Gaius' supporters and disrupt his plans for change. Lucius utilized his vast network of contacts and influence to spread disinformation and manipulate public opinion. He painted Gaius as a reckless idealist who would plunge Rome into chaos, arguing that his reforms would lead to economic ruin and social unrest. Many Romans, fearful of the unknown and wary of change, began to question Gaius' true intentions. In response, Gaius redoubled his efforts to engage with the people and counteract Lucius' deception. He held public forums and debates, where he passionately defended his vision for Rome and addressed the concerns of its citizens. As he demonstrated his unwavering commitment to their welfare, Gaius began to regain the trust and support of the Roman people. Chapter 6 A Battle of Wits and Will as the people of Rome clamoured for change, the Senate found itself caught in the crossfire between Gaius Valerius and Lucius Emilius. With the fate of the proposed reforms hanging in the balance, both men prepared to engage in a battle of wits and will, each seeking to gain the upper hand in this high-stakes struggle for power. Realising that he needed to shore up his base of support, Gaius turned to his allies and urged them to rally behind his cause. He knew that in order to overcome Lucius' entrenched position, he would need to present a united front and demonstrate the strength of his convictions. As a result, Gaius' supporters banded together, working tirelessly to win over undecided senators and secure crucial votes for the upcoming debate. Meanwhile, Lucius was not about to concede defeat without a fight. He too had powerful allies within the Senate, and he used their influence to undermine Gaius' efforts at every turn. Through a campaign of political maneuvering and subterfuge, Lucius sought to erode Gaius' credibility and cast doubt on the viability of his proposed reforms. As the day of the decisive debate approached, the atmosphere within the Senate was electric, charged with the anticipation of the impending clash between these two formidable adversaries. Senators and citizens alike eagerly awaited the outcome of this titanic struggle, knowing that the outcome would determine the course of Rome's future. On the day of the debate, the Senate chamber was filled to capacity, with spectators lining the walls and balconies. 
Gaius and Lucius took their places on opposing sides of the chamber, each steeling himself for the battle ahead. As the proceedings began, both men put forth their arguments with eloquence and passion, leaving no stone unturned in their quest to sway the hearts and minds of their fellow senators. As Gaius spoke, his voice resonated with conviction and determination, as he painted a vivid picture of the brighter future he envisioned for Rome. He appealed to the senators' sense of duty and honor, urging them to embrace change and stand on the right side of history. Lucius, on the other hand, sought to sow doubt and fear, arguing that Gaius' proposed reforms were reckless and would lead to the downfall of Rome. His words were calculated and cunning, designed to exploit the uncertainties and insecurities of his fellow senators. With the debate drawing to a close, it became clear that the outcome would be decided by the slimmest of margins. As the senators prepared to cast their votes, the tension in the chamber was palpable, the air thick with the weight of the momentous decision that lay before them. The future of Rome hung in the balance, and the stakes had never been higher. Chapter 7 The Moment of Truth The Roman Senate buzzed with anticipation as its members awaited the decisive vote, that would determine the fate of Gaius Valeru's proposed reforms. Senators whispered amongst themselves, casting furtive glances at the two main players in this intense struggle for power, Gaius and Lucius Emilius. Gaius stood tall, his eyes fixed on the senators before him, keenly aware that every vote would be crucial. His heart raced as he recalled the countless hours spent planning, debating, and seeking support for his vision of a better Rome. The tension in the air was palpable, and the weight of the moment bore heavily upon his shoulders. Lucius, on the other hand, maintained an outward appearance of calm, but the subtle twitch of his fingers betrayed his inner turmoil. He had fought tooth and nail to maintain his power and influence, using every trick in his arsenal to discredit Gaius and obstruct his reforms. As he surveyed the room, uncertainty gnawed at his core, and he could not shake the feeling that his control over the Senate was slipping through his fingers. The presiding senator, a distinguished older man with a stern expression, called for silence. Senators of Rome, the time has come for you to cast your votes on the proposed reforms of Gaius Valerius. Each of you holds the power to shape the future of our great empire. Let your voice be heard. One by one, the senators stood and announced their votes, their voices echoing through the hallowed chamber. A scribe diligently recorded each decision, his quill scratching on parchment with every utterance. Gaius listened intently, mentally tallying the votes. With each senator who declared support for his reforms, his hope grew. But with each dissenting voice, doubt crept in. Would his efforts be enough? Had he swayed enough of his fellow senators to make a difference? Beside him, Lucius's face betrayed no emotion as the votes poured in. His mind raced, calculating and recalculating the odds, his future hanging in the balance. He had spent years building his power and securing his position, but now, it all hinged on this moment. Finally, the last senator cast his vote, and the chamber fell silent. The presiding senator turned to the scribe, who tallied the results one last time before handing the parchment to the elder statesman. With a solemn expression, the presiding senator read the final count aloud. In favor of Gaius Valeru's reforms, 152 votes. Against, 148 votes. A murmur rippled through the senate as the impact of the announcement sunk in. Gaius' heart swelled with relief and triumph, his vision for a better Rome now within reach. He turned to Lucius, whose face had paled, his eyes betraying a flicker of fear and defeat. As the senators began to disperse, Gaius approached Lucius, his eyes locking onto his rivals. The people of Rome have spoken, Lucius, Gaius said, his voice steady and resolute. It is time for change, and no amount of cunning or manipulation can stand in the way of progress. Lucius stared back at Gaius, his expression a mix of anger and disbelief. Do not become complacent, Valerius, he hissed, his voice barely audible. The tides of power are ever shifting, and you may find yourself swept away by the very currents you've set in motion. With those ominous words, Lucius turned and disappeared into the throng of senators, leaving Gaius to contemplate the path ahead. Change had come to Rome, but Gaius knew that the road to true reform would be long and fraught with challenges. As he watched Lucius's retreating figure, he couldn't help but wonder if his rival's warning held a kernel of truth. Would the pursuit of his vision for Rome ultimately prove his undoing? Despite these lingering doubts, Gaius refused to let them overshadow his hard-won victory. The people of Rome had placed their trust in him, and he was determined to honor that trust by bringing about meaningful change. 
He knew that the battle for the soul of Rome was far from over, and that Lucius and his allies would not rest until they reclaimed their lost influence. But Gaius Valerius was a man of conviction, and he was prepared to stand firm against those who sought to drag Rome back into the shadows. As the sun set over the Eternal City, casting a warm glow across the marble buildings and cobbled streets, Gaius knew that a new chapter was beginning for Rome. A chapter that would be defined by the struggle between the forces of progress and the specter of corruption. But no matter the challenges ahead, Gaius was resolute in his belief that the strength and resilience of Rome would prevail. For now, Gaius allowed himself a moment of satisfaction as he savoured the taste of victory. Soon enough, the real work would begin, and he would lead the charge to bring lasting change to the empire. The moment of truth had come and gone, and the course of Rome's history had been irrevocably altered.